Welcome to The Deciding Point, our Crack Rackets weekly breakdown of the biggest storylines happening throughout the tennis world. This week's episode, going to focus on the 2021 Wimbledon, in particular this edition of the show. Going to focus on the results we've seen on the men's side. It does feel like that continuing generational shift, that changing of the guards. Yes, Novak Djokovic is on top of the tennis universe, but you look at guys like Hubi Hurkacz, Matteo Berrettini, Denis Shapovalov, of the new semi-finalists at Wimbledon challenging him. Six of the eight quarterfinalists at Wimbledon, first-time quarterfinalists at the event. Of course, the other two being Novak Djokovic, Roger Federer. But we want to explore all of those themes, all of those topics on today's show. With that in mind, Westoff, roll the credits. Let's get to it. With the American hardcourt summer just around the corner, let's talk a little American men's tennis coming out of the 2021 Wimbledon. In particular, I think if you are a fan of American men's tennis, the question you should be asking yourself, has Sebastian Corda taken the reins? Is he the guy to beat now? In the men's game on the American side, you look at some of the names, certainly John Isner, first round loss at Wimbledon to Yoshihito Nishioka. That was disappointing. You look at a guy like Sam Querrey, who made a final in the run-up to this event on a grass court. He loses second round. That was disappointing. Now, there are some other youngsters. I consider them still next-geners, born 97, 98. You know the generation of guys I'm talking about if you're a Cracked Rackets listener, that Fritz, Opelka, Tommy Paul, Francis T. Tiafo generation of players. There are other names that are missing. Believe me, I could go all the way through Mo, Korda, Wolf. We can do them all. Nakashima, again, they all belong in that conversation. They're all playing some really, really good tennis right now, but you look at the results for Sebastian Korda, you look at the advanced metrics for Sebastian Korda since the tour resumed in August, it's hard to argue against anyone but him being the top guy, being the guy to beat right now in on the American side in the men's game. You look at his numbers, 41 and 16 over the last 52 weeks. That's a 72% win percentage. He's won an ATP title. He's made finals on multiple surfaces. He's won a couple of challenger titles as well. Perhaps most impressively for a guy who just turned 21 years old 10 and 8 against the top 50 uh, 4 and 4 against the top 20 2 and 2 against top 10 opponents now his second serve win percentage diminishes as the level of opponent increases but you look at that first serve it's absolutely a weapon for Sebastian You look at that first serve for Sebastian Corda, it's absolutely a weapon. He's winning 65% of his first serve points against top 10 opponents, 71% of his first serve points against opponents overall. You look for him now that he is in the top 15. He's up to number 47 following this Wimbledon for Sebastian Corda. Currently ranks 27th in hold percentage. Now, again, you look at the way he serves. If you're actually watching these results, that first serve is going to be a weapon. The second serve hangs up a little bit now, but it's not a concerning second serve. There's nothing about his technique. There's nothing about the way he performs under the clutch, under pressure moments. He's, you know, Sebastian Cord has got it in terms of the serve. He's absolutely got a serve that will be able to set up plus one balls, will be able to set up, you know, him on his front foot throughout the course of matches and so 27th now I think that number is only going to improve the thing that's most impressive he's 11th amongst top 50 players in break percentage he is breaking serve about 28% of the time just turned 21 he's 11th amongst top 50 players normally that's the thing that's the big adjustment the pace of those serves the pace of the plus one balls coming at you we had this conversation on the mini break during Wimbledon but what's your game plan if you're playing Sebastian Corda what's the scouting report against him that's okay do this and it's going to break him down get him stretched into the outer thirds don't let him set his feet don't let him play on his front foot you could say those generic things about every player throw garbage at him keep the slice low 
and, you know, again, don't let him get the ball in the strike zone. Well, Dan Evans tried that. Didn't end up working for him at Wimbledon. Well, you know, serve to the forehand wing, not the backhand wing, because the backhand's exceptional. Maybe the forehand backswing is a little bit bigger. Like, yeah, if you can serve 135 mile per hour into his forehand, you may draw an error. You could say that about everyone. You know, bait him coming forward. Well, good, not great volleyer, but he knows when to come forward, and he's confident when he's up there, and he knows what the reads are. And at his age, that's the most important thing because the feel, the finesse will come. He can slice the backhand. Again, Again, you got to attack the second serve. If you can get the serve into his body, certainly, again, he doesn't have the quickest first step, but his length makes up for a lot of that. Sebastian Court is an absolute stud, and you look in his career, you know, he's played fewer than six main draws at Grand Slams. He's already made multiple round of 16s. He's done it on grass. He's done it on clay courts at the Slams. The only uh, places he hasn't made the round of 16, Australia and the U.S. Open, and does anyone think Sebastian Corda is going to struggle at the hard court Slams? I don't think so, particularly after his run in Miami this season. Sebastian Corda's been a breakthrough star, and, you know, again, why do I have that conversation about what are his weaknesses? What's the scouting report against him? Because you look at the rest of the young Americans emerging. Riley Opelka, certainly seven feet tall when that serves landing, when he's playing confidently, hitting the return freely for his size. I've never seen an athlete that can move on a tennis court like he can. And, you know, the backhand is good. It's fluid. It's just good. And the forehand's funky, but when he can turn into it, 120 miles per hour anywhere, he can hit that sort of shot. The problem is, can he sustain that level for the course of an hour and a half, two hours, three hours, four hours, even at the Grand Slam level? He hasn't answered that question yet. And that is a discernible thing to be concerned about for Fritz. Can he ever be a good enough mover, a good enough volleyer to take advantage of just a God-given shoulder and just the most beautiful contact point, fantastic ground strokes you'll see? He's getting better at it. Question that the answer to that question probably still no for you know Tommy Paul can he stay healthy long enough can he again keep that focus over the course of two and a half three four hours to where he's on Mach five he's playing aggressive tennis he doesn't get baited into being in the outer thirds and then you know again you can keep going down the list Tiafo is still interesting because his four you know the forehand return which is always the discernible weakness has gotten better and better and he's got all this creativity he seems to thrive in the big stages the big matches. That's a conversation for another time. Brandon Nakashima as well. So many young, talented players. But again, for Sebastian Corda, there's no question. I think all of us think it's not if, it's when he cracks the top 20 of the rankings. It's not if, it's when he gets into the top 10. Because that's the sort of upside he has. And I'm not projecting perennial world number one. I'm not saying he's going to win 10, 15, 20 grand slams. I'm saying he's going to be in the mix for as long as he's healthy, for as long as he's pursuing a professional tennis career. Again, that family breeds success. He's got all the physical tools. He's got the mentality as well. You come out of this 2021 Wimbledon. You've come out of these last 52 weeks because it has been a full calendar year now. The takeaway has to be Sebastian Corda. He's the guy right now in American men's tennis.